New mayor is expected to be sworn in next Thursday. The new mayor for the parish municipal corporations are expected to be sworn in when the corporation hosts their general monthly meeting next Thursday. Based on the results of Monday's local government election, there will be seven mayors from each of the country's two main political parties. PNP surprised that JLP is claiming victory in election. The People's National Party has expressed surprise that the Jamaica Labour Party is claiming victory in the local government election when the results from the Electoral Office of Jamaica has declared an even split of mayors. The PNP said based on the popular vote, as well as Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation now having a PNP mayor, it means the victory leans more in their favour. General Secretary Dr. Dayton Campbell pointed out that come next week, each party will have seven mayors sworn in. He said the GLP seems to be in denial of the fact that they lost mayorship of KSEMC. Dr. Campbell added, based on the number of overall divisions won, the PNP has the majority. We have 14 local authorities in the country. We do not refer to these as parish councils anymore. We refer to them as municipal corporations and city municipalities. In Kingston and St. Andrew, you have two parishes but one municipal corporation. In St. Catherine, you have one parish, but you have one municipal corporation and one city municipal council. So what we are saying is that having gone through the election, the contest is to see how many males each side will come out with. At the end of the counting, the PNP will have seven males and the JLP will have seven males. Why will the PNP have seven males? Because of those five corporations that the, the EOJ spoke to, plus the Kingston and St. Andrew Corporation, you can have a tie, but there is a tiebreaker in law. Roper, the Representation of the People Act, speaks to what is done when there is a tie in a corporation that has an even number of divisions. It says that the returning officer casts a vote in the favor of the side with the majority of the majority popular vote decide that as a popular vote, which means you add up all the votes that the PNP got in Kingston and St. Andrew, add up all the votes that the JLP got in Kingston and St. Andrew, you see which side got more. The PNP has approximately 14,000 more. Therefore, Kingston and St. Andrew will have a mayor from the People's National Party. I don't see how that is not counted with the PNP. We went into the election with the JLP having a mayor for KCMC. And now, after the election, the PNP has a mayor. It simply means that one side lost it and the other side gained it. And the, the city city municipal council, the Portmore Municipal Council, is well established in the Municipality Act. We vote for a direct mayor in Portmore, so it's not who wins the majority of the 12 councils in Portmore. There's a direct election of a mayor. They do have a council in Portmore. They have a council building. They collect their taxes. They have their budget. They do their allocations. Yes, it is true that they also sit in the St. Catherine Municipal Corporation. But that is what is in law currently. We did not originate this. I am surprised that we are arguing about things that are clearly outlined in law. At next week, when we have the swearing in, there will be seven mayors sworn in for the PNP and seven mayors sworn in for the JLP. We have then said, since both sides have won seven, we look at other things. There are 228 divisions in the country. The PNP has won 115. Half of 228 is 114. So it means the PNP won more. We've looked at the popular vote. The JLP has 303,000. The PNP has 326,000, if you include the mayoral votes in Portmore. Without those, the GLP has 292,000, I believe, or 290,000. The PNP has 311,000. That's all that we have been saying. House set on fire after police rescue murder suspect in Manchester. Firefighters had to be called to extinguish a blaze at a house in Cashton, Albion, Manchester on Friday, one hour after police and soldiers rescued a man accused of murder from the dwelling. The strong contingent of police and soldiers had left the community after rescuing the suspect. Preliminary reports were that about 7 p.m., smoke was seen coming from a section of a two-bedroom unfinished house. The fire brigade was alerted and one unit responded. Several items, including a bed, were destroyed. Earlier on Friday, the security forces rescued the suspect after he was barricaded himself inside the house from a mob. He is accused of inflicting wounds to a man during a dispute in the community 
the man identified by residents and relatives as Devon Jackson died. Church groups says utterances by Warmington and Meadows threaten Jamaica's political development. The Jamaica Council of Churches has expressed concern that recent utterances made by the political figures during and after the local government election pose a threat to the progress Jamaica has made in its political development. The council said utterances from former Minister of Works Edward Warmington and former provisional candidate for Trelawney North Dennis Meadows have brought back international focus the presence and persistence of political misconduct. In a statement condemning the incidents, the JCC said political victimization and questionable accountability standard have no place in governance. The council said citizens must demand and expect high standards in public life. General Secretary Reverend Newton Dixon said the council is in support of the two individuals renouncing their respective comments as well as both political parties taking action by cutting ties with the men. He called for a better sense of moral direction within society. We are in support of the actions that were taken both on the individual and the corporate level. We support every decision that is in the interest of moral and ethical probity. We have to find ways to become people who have some sense of moral direction. And this is not just at the upper echelons of society. This has to be a movement that runs right through every sector of society. We need to have more respect for each other and treat each other with a little more dignity. And I conclude by saying there is hope in Jamaica and there is hope for Jamaica. At least 100 Jamaicans wanted for extradition in relation to lottery scamming stated Chang. National Security Minister Dr. Red Chang says there are at least 100 Jamaicans wanted for extradition in relation to lottery scamming. Dr. Chung made the disclosure while speaking at the President's Breakfast Forum of the Global Service Sector Association of Jamaica in Montego Bay on Thursday, February 29. He noted that despite the efforts of law enforcement, the techniques of lottery scammers have been evolving. The minister added that the Jamaican government continues to work with its partners to target those involved. Dr. Chang said citizens have to stop viewing scamming as a kind of Robin Hood type of activity. He explained that it could be damaging to the country as it may cause Jamaica to miss out on business opportunities. At this point, there are some nearly 100 identifiable individuals for extradition. The government of Jamaica have no problem in cooperating and working to mitigate and hopefully remove this particular scourge of criminal activity from our system because they are a danger and a risk to society. Some people took this as some kind of Robin Hood activity and almost sought a kind of unholy alliance and accommodation. There is no room for accommodation. There is no room for compromise. In addition to the murder of our citizens and the extortion of honest people in North America, it damages the economic prospects of the country. If your cyberspace is not defended effectively and is not have the appropriate response, we lose opportunities. Jamaica strengthening cybersecurity stated Dr. Chong. As the government intensifies investments in the development of a digital economy locally to drive national development, robust security measures are being put in place to mitigate the threat of cybercrime, says National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang. Speaking at the Global Services Association of Jamaica, President's Breakfast Forum in Montego Bay on Thursday, Chang noted that the global cyber threat landscape continues to evolve with more sophisticated cyber attacks such as ransomware, supply chain attacks, and sponsored cyber espionage. As such, he said the government is actively strengthening the national cybersecurity infrastructure and investing in response capabilities. You will recall that last year, Senator Dana Morris Dixon was appointed minister without portfolio in the office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for skills and digital transformation. Given her expertise in this era, Senator Morris Dixon is providing guidance and support to our cybersecurity development to ensure that we have the requisite skills and the agility to respond and take advantage of the rapidly changing digital environment of the fourth industrial revolution, he stated. Dr. Chang, who is also Deputy Prime Minister, further pointed out that Data Protection Act, passed in 2020, has been enforced since December 1, 2023, providing a necessary safeguard and operating framework for handling personal information. The legislation has prompted companies to address how they collect, store, manage, disclose, and dispose of personal information to ensure compliance. The government is already making the necessary investment in these areas 
and has position of law enforcement agencies to provide leadership and support through research, innovation, and specialized training as we pursue national economic development while guaranteeing your cybersecurity, Dr. Chung underscored. Looking ahead, he said the public and private sectors must now take a proactive approach to mitigating risk, leveraging advantages technologies, and adopting to the evolving threat landscape and regulatory environment. The GSAJ President Breakfast Forum, which focused on security threats to the global services sector, featured panel discussions involving representatives from the Jamaica Constabulary Force Communication, Forensics and Cybercrime Division, the Office of the Information Commissioner, and more. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.